George Kirkpatrick, inspiration for the nation, celebrating people we feel good about. We are celebrating somebody we feel good about. Linda Irvin, with no, with nothing attached to her name, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just Linda Irvin, That's it. who is a retired uh, county legislator who has been on the board for the town of DeWitt School Board, who's been and who has been and probably will continue to be involved in many community organizations. But I wanted to take this moment and and just give Linda her flowers for the tirelessness work that she and her husband, by the way, uh, work that they put in, in this community. And I didn't want this moment to pass without basically honoring and and, and, and uplifting Linda the work that you've been doing for a long time in, <laughs> in this community. Now, if you see Linda, Linda, there's one thing that I'm looking at you right now that there's something missing. Where's the hat? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I told Linda, I said, well, so, what's going on here? Um, but Linda, so good to talk. So Linda, talk to me about, uh, first of all, and then when you said retirement, I was like, really? Like, you mean <laughs> just from the ledge? Because I know, I know that ain't for real, for real. So let's talk about uh, your first decision to retire from the Onondaga County Legislature. Well, George, just like this. I think that we we get in positions and we stay there um, and we have goals that we want to accomplish. And, and I always think about reaching those goals and then moving aside for somebody to come behind me. I don't think it's a lifelong opportunity to stay in office. I don't think people should stay beyond, we don't have any term limits, so I could probably have stayed there forever, mm -hmm. but I don't think that's the way it should work. And and I want to, you know, and certainly I, I I have another life besides the legislature, and I want to be able to do some other things, and maybe not be obligated to be at the legislature when I when it's in session, but I really want to make a room for somebody who was younger than myself to come behind me. I've been there 14 years, and I thought that was time to to leave. I really had thought about it two years ago, but I couldn't find someone who was ready to to step in. Sure. Uh, and not that it's my job to do that, but I felt it was my job to do that for the sake of my constituents and for the sake of the community. I wanted someone to come behind me who at least thought somewhat like I think and at least looks like I look. So that's what I did. Yeah, representing the, the 19th legislative district, you've seen a lot of changes in the legislature. Well, it was 19th over... to begin with. Well, I'm sorry, started, it, what is it now? Man. What is it, 17? 17, yeah. Thank you, right. Yeah, yeah. Seven, nine, and and you, were, you were the Democratic floor leader at one time. Mm -hmm. So, um, a lot has, you know, and, and Democrats actually had, they were close, right? Or you had, no, you were the, uh, you had the majority at one, one time, mm -hmm. right? Never the majority, but very close. Well, before I got there, uh, but the, never since I've been there, it's always been, been, well, we've been bigger than we are now, but, but certainly not close to having a majority. And the problem is, um, you know, the, the districts, the way they're drawn, it's it's tough to win in those out of outlying districts. Um, right. And so they they pretty much sort of give up these six areas that are close to the city, you know, and they and they, and they just take everything else, um, which is unfortunate. But but when I got down there, um, my first term, you know, things you could you could talk to the Republicans and get some things done. You could, you could reach across the aisles and get some things done. Um, now it's very tough. It's a it's a different world. Um, and I think it's it's from the national level. It comes trickles down to local government, and and the the divisive divisiveness that is is has been created by Mr. Trump and his people uh, is there. It's it's clear, and and you can't you know you you to get something done. It, it takes a lot of hard work to get something, and not even just hard work. It takes changing some minds that are really kind of closed minds, and that's that's difficult. And I think I wish the new people well because I think they they're going to have energy and they're going to be excited and they're going to be able to maybe form some partnerships across the aisle. Um, um, I just had gotten to the point where you know it's enough. It was enough for me. You uh, tell me. I think the the makeup of the legislature you're going to have uh, one additional person of color. So that would be probably yeah, a record right i mean this is, yes this is the very first time mm -hmm. that there have been as many black people there as as we have right now there's four yeah and typically there's two right two. <laughs> <laughs> typically there's two two uh, at the, one the point, south side city yeah. representative yeah, and yeah. the east side city representative that includes yep. the east side of dewitt that's, but, uh, that's typically the way it's been for a number of years um 
and, and I think that you know, with, with four of them, and actually this is the very first time there's someone with, with um, Latina heritage because Nadisha has both black and yeah. And so that's, this is the very first. Right. Um, but I, I think that they're ready and, and they have good ideas. And, and I've saw, I've talked to everyone about what they should be thinking about um, because clearly, you know, with six votes, you can't, you can't do anything with six votes. Right. So you've got to find somebody on the other side who will think that what your idea is, is a good idea. And working together, and I, you know, I, I sent at the end of the, my term, I sent a nice goodbye letter kind of thing, email to everyone, explaining to the, the people who are there, who are coming, staying on, that it needs to be a team. It needs to be teamwork. Uh, you know, this partisan politics has no place in governing. And not that it'll make a big difference, but I hope that someone might have thought about what I said and maybe it'll make a difference. I don't know. I always hope that it makes a difference. <laughs> Talk with Linda Urban, retired county legislature from the 17th uh, district. And yes. so the four people, Charles Garland, Mo Brown and Nidicia Hernandez are the two newcomers. Uh, and Palmer. To, uh, new con? Palmer. Palmer. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh. Mo, Nidicia, and Palmer. Okay. Okay. Are, are the three new people. So wow. it's three new and Charles stays on. Oh, start, oh, three new and Charles stays on. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that is a record. Mm hmm. Yes, very much so. And so, you know, there's some things that I hope they get done. And in fact, I talked with um, a couple of them already about next month for Black History Month to make sure they do something um, this year. You might recall a few years ago when um, <laughs> the chairperson tried to tell me how to celebrate Black History Month. And I explained to him that I, I certainly knew what I was doing <laughs> 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 and, and that uh, it was more than just talking about Jerry Rescue, but uh, so hopefully uh, this year, last year I had uh, um, Bishop Colette Matthews come down and, and talk with us. And so hopefully this year we'll bring somebody down and do something different. So. so just again, let's go through who are the new legislators who are making history in Onondaga County? Okay, so now we have Nodisha Hernandez, we have Mo Brown, and we have Palmer Harvey, and then Charles stays on, Dan Romeo is new, and Chris stays on. So it's Chris Ryan, Charles Garland, uh, Don, Dan Romeo, Mo, Maurice Brown, Mo, mm -hmm. <laughs> Nodisha, Palmer Harvey. Um, so it's it's a, it's a, a different makeup. Well, it's so very interesting, and these, uh, especially, I know Mo's very progressive, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 so will there be any way for those? I mean, he's very progressive ideas. Uh, uh, representing a very particular point of view. Will there be any room for the things that he's interested in to get any traction in a legislature that um, has not been traditionally receptive to those sort of ideas? Well, I think that's what's going to have to happen is um, he's going to have to have some out outside community folks come down um, and support him when he's trying to put something on the floor. He's going to need to get some someone on the other side of the aisle to at least listen to him. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, the, the caucus as a unit has to work together to grab some other votes from the other side. Um, and you also, believe in that, though. You really believe in yeah, that. I, I do believe in that. I, I believe that's the way it should be done. But when you can't get it done that way, then you put it on the floor and make some noise about it and hope, hope that folks outside put some pressure on the folks on the other side to get something done. Um, you know, that's, that's oftentimes the way that things get done, un unfortunately. But um, now I do believe that we should be able to work together. I really do. And I've done, I've been that way when I was on a school board, I felt that way. And a school board was, is not partisan, wasn't back then partisan politics. So nobody knew who you were in terms of politics. They just knew you were concerned about the, the students and the community and, and they went with you. Um, and so that's the way it should work. Yeah. What, you made history in the town in uh, James Hill DeWitt school board. Uh, yeah. How? The very first, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the very first. The very yeah. first, yes. Very first on the school board, and of course, then therefore the very first president of color. Um, yeah, it, and and it was oftentimes not an easy job to have. Uh, uh, it's it's a it's a sometimes a very thankless job because people take everything out on you as though you can snap your fingers and change something, and you really you really can't. You're one of nine sitting mm -hmm. there and have to have folks agree with you. But my my. My point of view there was my my I had seen my my children and, and their friends being treated differently, and and I didn't like it, so I ran for the board. Um, you know, I I was on the parent teacher group first, and and I was seeing some things I didn't like, and I said, well, I can't make any 
effect here. So maybe I'll step up and run for something where I can make some changes. So I ran for the board and 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 did make some changes. Um, recruiting, they always recruited the same places, Oswego and Cortland. So so you, you your kids graduate from JD, they go to Cortland, they come back and they teach. There's no change there. There's there's no, you know, they're, they're coming back with the same attitudes they had when they left. So I wanted them to start recruiting where they could find some people of color to come work for JD. And it was a struggle, but I got some leverage and 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 they did start thinking about it. In fact, I I'll never forget that. I always say this to people. I was at a meeting, the person sitting next to me said, why do you think we have to do this? Because I was saying, let's go and recruit someplace else. Let's go down south and recruit. And I said, well, let, let me put it this way. You sitting in a room, no, you're sitting in a, a building all day and you're the only person that looks like you. I said, how, how are you going to feel? And he said, well, I hadn't thought about it like that. I said, well, now think about the students who are here. We have students in this building who don't see anybody who looks like them from the time they get here till the time they leave. And at that point, we only have one person of color. I think he was a, a coach or a phys ed teacher. No, he's a coach. And, um, but he, he didn't embrace his, his uh, ethnicity the way probably he should have. Anyway, I said, so how do you think they feel? And he says, oh, well, I didn't think about it like that. I said, well, then that's what you should be thinking about because these students need to be able to feel comfortable in the building. And how can they feel comfortable? When they want to go to say something to somebody, they're upset, who are they going to go to? Um, mm. You know, they're not, they're, they're not seeing anybody that looks welcoming to them. And so, so then we started trying to reach out and bring some other folks in. I got, you know, a, a vice principal that that was of color at, at that time. I got a, um, a guidance counselor who was of color at that time and it helped, you know, and, and then we also had some other folks. Uh, we had a bus driver and uh, I think we had somebody in the cafeteria, but long story short, things changed a little bit. Um, and then of course, the, the, then we got to that point where there was that mini riot that was the big snafu and they, <laughs> they, they thought that it was terrible that this young man had, had beat up this, this other young man and the, the young man of color who did it was retaliating against the kid who jumped on him. And so mm -hmm. it wasn't like he just all of a sudden just decided he was going to beat somebody. It was it was a fight. It was like any other fight, you know. But I used that as a way to get them to get some training in. So they so we brought in some people to do some diversity training, and and it helped somewhat. But it's always going to be an issue where um, unless you're thinking about it, unless you have someone there in the building or on the board that reminds folks that you know. This is about all of our students, not just about a certain kind of student. And the same thing happens in other government, like here at the, at the ledge. Yeah. You know, um, Linda, I'm thinking about you as someone who, well, Linda and I are basically neighbors. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> we are neighbors. And we I are was, neighbors. I'm fascinated by the fact that you are so active in all parts of the community including your own home and including where you live. And I mm -hmm. think that's very critical and powerful and important. And we're seeing, um, for example, Bernard Alex now uh, making history uh, as the first African-American for the mm -hmm. town board in DeWitt. And I know this is, you've been on a campaign to <laughs> get folks to run for that town board forever and ever and ever. And yeah. the point I'm making is not only are you interested in what's happening in the city government, which obviously is a big concern for a lot of folks, mm -hmm. but you've also been very concerned about what's happening in your own community where you actually live and educated your children. Though, mm -hmm. even though you lived here in DeWitt um, um, or in the county, to be more specific, right? Mm -hmm. You also have been very active all over Syracuse uh, and 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 the and the, and the quote that I sent you in my 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 tease was like showing up. Linda Irvin is going to show up somewhere. <laughs> so I want yeah. to I want to get to that in a second. But this idea of the commitment because some of us are active, more active in the city and not as active in you know I feel like I'm the same like that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. more active towards Syracuse stuff where the stuff that I should really be concerned about is the stuff right here. Why was it important for you to be as active in city politics or Syracuse issues as well as the issues in the community where you live? Well, basically, you know, your local government is is more, well, it's more important than national government when you right. think about it. And, and so I live in DeWitt. 
you know, when I, and my children lived in the wit. I wanted them to understand that, that, you know, take care of home as well mm -hmm. as, you know, digger. And so I, I've always done that. Um, and so um, being involved out here, someone said to me once, well, you don't go to church out here. No, I said, no, I don't. I said, I, I go to church in the city because that's where I, I want to go to church. I said, but, but, uh, but my, and I want my children to know uh, that, that there's a community beyond just the town of DeWitt. But I also want to make sure DeWitt operates and recognizes that we're part of them. We're part right. of this, we're part of this town. Uh, we pay taxes out here. We, we, we should be treated like, like anybody else. And thankfully Bernard is on the board now and hopefully he'll make some big changes. I mean, I, Yes, I've been recruiting for a long, long time. I you have been. To, you you I have. I tried to recruit you, and you keep saying no. But I found you. I found. I found. I, 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 I was wondering. Yes. I was wondering if you were going to out me. <laughs> yeah, of course I'm going to out you. <laughs> but you still have time. You're still young. We you still have time to do something, I, George. I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll take that. That I'm still young. You know, um, what's your, what, where did you get this fire? Because my, 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 my observation of your leadership style. Is quiet power like mm -hmm. you're gonna just be you you you're you're in the room, you know you're not screaming and yelling. That's mm -hmm. my perception, okay. That's but you're if, no. no and mm -hmm. uh, no. Talk to me about your style and and how you chose this particular way of being. Well, you know, <laughs> it's funny, um, and and really, I grew up as an introvert. I really was not. This was not me growing up. I. I I've evolved to something different than I was going up. In fact, when I see some folks from home, they they uh, are surprised at what I've done. But bottom line is, um, I know I'm I'll never forget this. Somebody at church said you can get, of course, more you get more more bees with honey rather than trying to be angry all the time and try to make noise. And so I try not to make noise if I don't have to. I try to do it quietly. If I try to get people to agree with me, um, and then I get work done that way. Um, I don't think there's a need to yell and scream. And quite honestly, some of the folks that came before me, they yelled and screamed, but they didn't get them a lot done. Because if you look at the things we had to keep doing while I was there, uh, that should have been done before I got there. But the yelling and screaming didn't didn't make it happen. So, it so, happen. so yeah. So, but but I think when you talk to people and you and you lay it out and and they they see that there's okay, this makes sense, then they'll go with it. And that's the way I try to make things happen. I, I try to, my leadership style is to get other folks involved. Uh, I like to get their input. I like to get them to be involved and, and step out as well. I like to reach out and find folks to come behind me like I did this time and, and try to find people to, to run for the school board and, and town board to make sure that we have representation there. Um, and and then I like to, you know, sit back and I'll help mentor them. But but I, I, I think that that accomplishes more than, than just confrontation. Uh, and there's time for confrontation. Yeah, there is, but not all the time. How do you think DeWitt has involved, evolved from the time that you started? I mean, because we just we had a recent incident with with one of the administrators on on that Zoom call with some mm. racial epithets. But so I guess that answers itself, right? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, right? You know, you, it's it's unfortunate yeah. that we 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 make two steps forward and we make three steps backwards. Um, and I think it's it depends upon who's sitting in the, mm. in the position, and right. and that's the biggest. Like like we have since I left, I recruited someone to come behind me who looked like me, and and she served for one term, and because of her family situation, she couldn't stay any longer. Since then, I have not found anybody to come sit at that table. But not sitting at the table allows them to make decisions that um, are sort of like in a vacuum. School board, and, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and and that's not that's not really good. Um, and so I put pressure from the outside. I go there to meetings and make and make comments and try to do it that way. But but we need somebody sitting at that table um, going forward. I understand this last time we did we did elect someone who's of Asian descent, which is really good because we got a lot of Asian students there. You know, it's a very diverse you know district, and so those things have to be. So I think that at this point um, for the district, there's a need for more folks to be involved, more parents to be involved. Go to the meetings, speak up, and get things done. That's how things happen. Um, same same thing with any any government. Constituents should come to meetings and, and express their concerns, and then and also express their concerns to the representatives. You you elect someone and then just let them go run them up? No, that's not the way it works. You you challenge them along the way because they always challenge me. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, I got calls and challenges along the way. But 
but some of the some of the representatives don't their people don't tell them what they think and whether they think about what they think. Um, they make decisions based on politics rather than what their district needs and what their people want. We'll we'll talk with Linda Irvin, retired Onondaga County legislative legislator from the seventeenth district. Uh, Linda, but are you really retired? <laughs> no, I'm retired from the legislature. Okay, I'm not sitting down twiddling my thumbs. No, that's not good. That's not me. It won't be happening. I, I'm still involved with a lot of things, and I will stay involved with a lot. You're gonna st- so we're gonna still see you showing up everywhere, right? Oh yeah, I may not show up as everywhere like I did before, but you'll see me a lot. <laughs> no, you did. Uh, and how did you manage that to be in? You know, you were just there, like oh, this Linda. You know, now I'm not saying that I was there, but. Wherever I <laughs> Someone was, told you, you I was there, right? <laughs> <laughs> or you yeah. were going to the next thing or coming from a thing and, <laughs> and going to two more things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I try to set my schedule where I could fit in those things that were important for the for the for me to be at for the community. And when I'm invited to something that I think is important, um, you know, I try to make a way to make it happen. I may not stay the whole time because I may mm-hmm. have something else on my calendar. But I tried to make sure that I was I was there, and I think that's what representatives are supposed to do. I mean, how do you know what's happening? And in, 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 how do you how do you know how to vote if you don't know what's going on in the community? So right. you, you've got to be there. You've got to be involved. And so I try to do that. And and then you know it just is 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 who I am. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what, what what would you say would be um, your proudest moment in legislature, and and what you feel that wow, I really stood up for this mm. thing and I'm glad I did. No, there's so many, but but um you know I I I I I don't think there's one in particular, but I will say that the the <laughs> the fight to get the fight to get that resolution done about racism was was one of the times that I think I'm very thankful for the community for coming up and showing out for that mm-hmm. one. That was that was important. The MWB situation, I'm glad about the community coming out to to show up for that one as well. Um, but there have been quiet things that have happened. Like I just got money for the veterans um, monument down in Kirk Park in this last budget. I mean, I've done things over the years that um, didn't get a lot of attention, but but I think those two are are, are the most, those two I think were. Can you say more about the re- ra- racism re- resolution? Okay, so there was a resolution. Um, <laughs> let me back it up. So I got a, I got a call and an, and an email from um, somebody in the media about the fact that there was something still on the books in the historical society, I found it, that talked about um, slavery and, and, and people being sold and, and, and people not being recognized as, as humans, uh, basically. It was, it was quite graphic and it was still on the books. And, and so for taxation, the way it read was that, you know, women, black women were not even counted and black men were were like two thirds of something. It was really it was awkward. And when I saw it, I kept thinking, well, this this can't still be. I said it's not in effect, of course, but it's still on on the records. And so I wanted to be able to erase it and say that we don't embrace whatever that said. And so I did a resolution to say just that. And 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 then, um, I, I guess I knew that was going to be challenging. I knew it was going to be challenging to to get it through because it was it's quick. It was a quick turnaround. But I did talk to the chairperson and I said to him, I'm going to be presenting this. And, and I hope that, you know, everybody will support it because it, it's it's only logical that we would say we denounce this language and this should not be part of our records. Well, it wasn't that logical because they took exception with my resolution and uh, they said that I was calling them racist. Of course. And, and that um, they don't embrace systemic racism. Systemic that sounds wrong. We shouldn't have that in, that word in the resolution. It does, because it doesn't happen, right? No, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. <laughs> and so, um, and so, yeah, so it was a fight. It was a fight. And, and I, you know, I, I really couldn't figure out why, why are we fighting over this? So then they changed the resolution to make it acceptable to their side of the aisle. And they asked me, would I accept the change? And I said, well, I mean, if, if this is the only way I can get it through, I'm going to accept the changes, but I'm going to speak about it. You know, I'm going to speak about it on the floor because this is not what I intended, but I'll accept this watered down resolution to get it passed. So it, we, we used the watered down resolution and I, I, my original resolution was on my desk and the media person saw the resolution and the red lines that they had changed everything. 
And so they used that in their article. Well, I didn't I didn't show it to, to her. She just happened to come on my desk and see it. Anyway, long story short, uh, it got passed and I spoke about the fact that this should not have been such a fight. You know, this should just have been accepted. You should want to say this. Now, one legislator walked out of the room and did not come back to vote because you can't abstain on the floor. You have to leave the room so you don't vote for something. So one legislator walked out and would not come back to vote and said to me later that he didn't, he didn't feel like he had enough time to consider it. He wasn't prepared. So that's why he didn't want to vote. He is now the chairman of the legislature. Mm -hmm. Now you can figure that out. So yeah, so it, it, was, uh, it was a crazy time. And then, as I said, the chairperson that day said that um, I had not used... Um, and not celebrated Black History Month the right way by doing what I did. And there's so many other things we could have talked about. We could have talked about Jerry Rescue, this, that, and the other. And I looked at him like, is he really saying this to me? So I took, I, I got up on the floor again and said, no, I really don't understand this, this, this discussion. I said, but um, this was not about celebrating Black history. This was about changing it wrong. And, mm -hmm. and certainly I know how to celebrate Black history. And, the, and Jerry Rescue is just a very small part of our Black history here in Syracuse. So I assumed from that point that there'd be something last year about Black history and there was nothing planned. So that's why I brought down Colette and she did what she did on the floor. She And she did a very good job. And so this year, I think the, the caucus is talking about doing something as a gold seal for someone that will be, I think, much more re representative of what we should be talking about. But it's really difficult to, it, it, they take exception about anything about race um, and as though, we shouldn't talk about it, but it's part of our life. It, right. it's, it's part of what's happening. Um, if you, you know, I, I mentioned in the article that Michelle Bradenbeck just did, I come down for 14 years, I come down, come in the employee's entrance, the back door, um, and sometimes the people who are on the door will recognize me and say, oh, come on in kind of thing without me even showing my badge. Other times people look at me like, well, what are you doing here kind of thing? So I show my badge, you know, but it shouldn't have to happen that way. If I'm coming in that door, I, I know where I'm going. You know, right, right. <laughs> and, and I know it's an employee's door. I'm, I'm usually looking professional when I come in, and to to look at me as though I don't belong is shouldn't shouldn't be happening. You know, and clearly they're not always the same people, but but it's just that kind of feeling that you have in this community. This community is not welcoming, uh, and it, and it, and, it, and you have to make it welcoming, and that's what we have to do. Yeah, and 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 so how do we do that? How do we make it more welcoming? And how do you um, look at yourself in terms of the legacy and the history and the trails that you've made in the quiet way that you've done it? <laughs> well, the bottom line is we have to keep fighting. We have to, we can't give up because we, we can't say, oh, we've done it now, we can sit back. It's not gonna happen that way. Mm -hmm. We've gotta keep fighting. And we've gotta keep bringing people along with us. And that's my, my whole thing is to bring somebody behind me, bring somebody along who can do the work as well. And, and you know, we did a, unfortunately, I forgot how many years ago it was when Monica was still on, on the ledge. We did a, a training kind of thing. She and I and Helen Hudson and a few other people did some training um, of people telling people what they should be thinking about stepping up and whatnot. And some of those folks are now in office, which is really good. And we should do more of that because there are young people who, and like this last time in the city, a lot of folks ran, but they weren't prepared. Um, mm -hmm. I think what needs to happen is we need to help prepare folks to run for the offices and to to step up and do what needs to be done. If if we don't step forward, nothing's going to happen. And if we sit back and say, well, somebody else is going to do it, that's not the way it's going to work. You've got to start cultivating, harvesting people to do the things that need to be done. And that's, if, if nothing else, my legacy should say that I did reach out and try to help people along the way and, 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 and mentor them to be able to do the things they do. I mean, uh, I clearly can't take, you know, I can't say that I got them elected, but I think I sort of helped get them elected. <laughs> uh, and Bernard was was um, he saying to me the other day, he says, you know, I didn't think it was going to happen this way. Yeah, if you if you get involved, and he has been involved in the, in the town, right? And and you get involved, and and they know who you are, and then and they know that I support you. Then sometimes that makes a difference. So, so yeah, I think that that's that's my legacy is that I will have helped a lot of folks get where they need to be, and help them as as they got in office, help them do what they did. You know, and you're still I, gonna be out in this community. You're on the oh, yeah. rotary, you're active in your church. I mean you <laughs> Yeah, yeah I'm, how, I'm still gonna how, be very active. I'm on I'm on boards that that are are, are active. And you know, I, I think that one of the things that, that growing up our pastor said, you know, um you have to be you have to get involved. He was he was someone who who marched with Dr. King, so he he was 
certainly somebody who wanted us to, to go further. And when I went home for my first time home from college, when I went back to back home from SU, he said, what are you doing up in Syracuse? I said, well, right now, Pastor, I'm just sitting on the bench. He says, oh, no, that's not acceptable. And and, and each time I went home, he would say the same to me. What are you going to do next? You know, why are you sitting on, why aren't you doing something? So when I graduated and moved back here after we got married, he says, are you still sitting on a pew? I said, I'm about to do something else now because because he, he was right. I was sitting on the pew not doing anything and I should be doing more. And so that's what I do. Both you and your husband are very active in the community. Did yeah. you guys talk about that as part of the partnership that you were gonna have? <laughs> no, it just sort of it just sort of happened, you know, it just sort of happened. We we just, you know, I I pull him along, he pulls me along, and it just sort of happened. And it's it's been it's been we've been blessed to do a lot of things and 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 I, I touch a lot of people and I, I, I hope that that we'll, we'll continue to do that. Yeah. You you're gonna spend more time with your grandchildren. Well, you know, they, they, as long as they want us to spend time, because they're teenagers now. Right, 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 time, right, 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 right. We, we will spend time as long as they want me and people to be there. Me and people will be there. So we, we plan to go down as much as we, they're, they're down in Atlanta area. So we'll go down as much as we can. Yeah. Um, you, you went to Syracuse. What, what, is, what was your background uh, professionally? Um, well, <laughs> when I went to school, my intent was not to do anything that I'm doing right now. But, but anyway, uh, I, I, I was... In insurance for a while, then I did real estate mm -hmm. um, for a good good many years. And uh, it, but my my background was in my when I went to school, I was studying psychology. Mm -hmm. My my intent was to go on to school, go on further, and and you know do counseling. But when I got married, and he went he went to Vietnam, and things changed, and so I just didn't go any further. Mm -hmm. So, but I use a lot of that you know that 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 talking about how people think when I do what I do. <laughs> what what I mean. You 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 sort of said this, but I, I I didn't know if I wanted to bring this up, but I guess I will. Okay. Um, <laughs> you and I had a different opinion about the aquarium, which I told you. <laughs> yes, 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 we did. <laughs> you ain't see the point of it. <laughs> and I, you said, "What the? We got more important things to do." And I was like, "Why not?" So, uh, tell me why I was wrong for having the why I thought it was okay to do it. Well, I mean, it's not just there was there was. I won't say there was no right and wrong in this. There was some wrong. The wrong was was, was how it was handled. Okay. Um, you know, and I, I and I told Ryan this my directly. He handled it poorly. Um, to, we had, we should have talked about the aquarium, talked about what the impact would be, talked about how much money it was going to take to do it, and whether this was the right time to do it. And the right time. Yeah. That's and we didn't the, mm -hmm. we didn't do any of that. And it just jumped out there and he put it out into the public without talking to the legislature and which was wrong and committed this $85 million to this project without thinking about what else we could do with $85 million. Uh, the whole time I've been on, sorry, the whole time I was on the ledge rather, I talked about the fact that we had this big fund balance that we never, never touched. It was like, you know, sacred. We can't touch it because there's going to be a, a big hurricane coming. We might need it. Well, the storms came and the storms left and we still didn't touch it, you know, and, and now we, they were sitting on millions of dollars that we could have been using to do things with, you know, mm -hmm. and, so, and so that was my thought was we should have been able to talk about this more and think about whether this is the right time to do this and whether this is the right way to do this. Should yeah. there be more, should be more public, not public, private investment in this as well as government investment? Should there, should there be another way to finance it? And what's going to happen when going forward? Is it going to be like destiny fall apart after after it's open for a couple of years? But we didn't talk about it. We just jumped in uh -huh. and poured money into it, and now we're in the middle of it now. So it's it is it it. And I, you know, I've I've gone to aquariums in other places, um, you know, and they're, they're very. And you go once. You don't go every day. You don't go. You don't you, you don't travel to 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 Buffalo to an to an aquarium. You don't you don't travel to. Niagara Falls to an aquarium. You don't travel to, well, when I go to Atlanta, I don't go every time I go down there. I've been there once. I go to Atlanta almost every year. I've been to the aquarium once. Well, it's a nice aquarium, but who goes more than once? And so how are you going to support this aquarium in, in Syracuse? These people aren't coming to Syracuse to see an aquarium every week. And how are you going to support it? And, and, it, and the cost of it, if you have a family of four, you and a family of four to go to the aquarium, it's going to cost you $100. Who's mm. going to do that? Who's going to do that on more than once or twice? It's not going to happen. So how are you going to support it? And we never got to get the information about those that. questions. So, yeah. So those questions weren't answered for me. And so I was not in favor of it. 
um, and I'm look, I ain't looking at all. I, I'm, you raised some really good points, and I ain't look at any of those things. I'm thinking, oh, it'd be nice to have this fun. Yeah, thing yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, but do you think? But on the other hand, the acquiring the acquisition of the land to make it possible for Micron to choose Syracuse. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your thoughts about that move, and or what's your thoughts about the impact that Micron will have on this community? The, that one particular investment. Yeah, I mean, clearly, the hope is that everything Micron has promised will come into fruition because um, it's big. This is clearly a big, a big, big po- po- positive thing for for the county. Uh, the way the land was acquired, I'm not so not so happy about the way Ryan did that. Um, but uh, again, you know, he's in charge. He did what he did. But I think some of the people who had to give up their their property didn't weren't handled properly, weren't hurt, handled properly rather. Um, and so that was not a good way, but but I think the investment, yes, makes sense. And and yes, I think that the fact that that we are able now to, to, to be in position to have the kind of jobs and the kind of people coming here uh, that this will bring, is a very important, very important. Yeah. And I, I'm pleased to see that, you know, um, they've already started hiring people who look like us to do things that make make impact, that's that's important. Um, just like JMA, when JMA came, um, I'm a, I'm, I was impressed to see that they hired a young man immediately almost who looked like me to be in, involved. I mean, that's what you want. When they talk to you about these things and, and, you, and you say, okay, let's see how it's gonna work. You want them to do what they say they're gonna do. You don't want them to come in like like with like with Chrysler when they the plant out <laughs> new process gear was was doing well, and then they sold to the, the next people who said they were going to do X, Y, and Z and did not do X, Y, and Z, and then right. they told, nothing happened. You don't want that. You don't want to have to give the government money to people who are not going to do what they're supposed to do. Um, and and you know, I looking around now, there's a lot of development, um, and some of it we've get, given money to. And I challenge the folks who have, have taken that money to make sure they do what they're going to do with it. Yeah. Well, what would you say, Linda Irvin, retired Onondaga County legislator for the 17th district, retired from the legislature? Yeah. Um, what would you say was what is your inspiration and who inspired you to do this work in this community? Well, I, I think. Um, it starts with it started with with church growing up in church and and being inspired to be a community person there at home in church. Then I, then here, um, Reverend Howard was was my minister here, and he was very much involved in the community, and I, he helped me along the way as well. Um, and then it becomes something from within that God gives you, and and you and you feel as though the work you're doing is what He wants you to do. And mm-hmm. if you have if you're a person of faith, which I am clearly. Um, you listen to what that voice says to you about what needs to happen, and you want to help people, and and that's what that's what we do. You know, it's all about helping people, and helping grow, and helping understand what what is in front of us. And you know, God's blessed me to be able to do some of those things, and I hope He keeps blessing me to do more. But I I, I think that that's what inspires me to do what I do. And I've I've watched other people, you know, clearly watching. Um, I took over from Lovey Winslow. She was quite a factor in the legislature um, until she became ill. Um, yeah, she, she did a great job and I wanted to be able to do what she did, you know, and, and actually I didn't, I didn't think about stepping into this job until somebody took me to lunch and said, you know, she's gonna, probably going to have to step down soon. What do you think? I said, well, I don't know. I don't know about that. And so ultimately I said, well, maybe let me talk to her and see what she says. So I talked with her. She was over at the Nottingham then. I talked with her and I said, you know, I'm thinking about it. She says, I think it'll be good for you to do. And I, I want somebody to come behind me who will do the right thing. So, yeah, there have been people who have, I've watched and have helped me and, I've been inspired by a lot of the women that came before us. And uh, I, I think that if we don't look back a little bit, we can't go forward. Mm. Linda Irvin, who's not done working in the community, but I wanted to stop and pause and at least recognize the work you've done so far, which we ain't done yet. <laughs> <laughs> the work I've done as an elected official. <laughs> as an elected official. I, let's be clear. <laughs> Let's be clear, Linda, it's so good to talk to you, my neighbor, right? Yes, <laughs> and yes. Looking forward to continuing to see you do the good work in the community. And um, are there things that, uh, now that you don't have this obligation that you've been wanting to do, that you're now going to do? 
Um, you know, I haven't haven't set up a plan yet of what I want to do going forward. Um, you know, my husband and I said we're going to do more a little bit more traveling because I'm not obligated to be. For instance, you know, the the first session of the legislature is always you know January the first Tuesday in January. Right. And so we usually go down to see the kids for Christmas, and so I have to rush back to be back for that meeting. Well, I don't have to do that anymore. You know, that that sort of thing. So yeah, we're going to do some things differently. Uh, as long as God blesses us to do that, as long as our health allows us to do that. Linda Irvin, we uh, continue to ask for uh, your, the blessings on the work that you are doing and will continue to do uh, in this community. And for the legacy that you have uh, left us uh, politically, <laughs> <laughs> yes. that we, uh, that, that, that the shoes that, that are being filled by your presence uh, will continue to honor the work that you have done. And we appreciate you here on Inspiration for the Nation, somebody who we feel good about. Thank you. Thank you so much, George. And think about your future as well. I will. <laughs> Do you hear that? You hear that when she said, I got you. Inspiration for the Nation. <laughs>